How's it going everyone? Chris here with another Question Time video episode. Uh, I've picked out three questions from my Formspring account that I'm going to talk about today and then uh, move on to three interesting design links that I've picked out. So uh, let's get on with the questions. So first question, hi Chris, I would love to hear your thoughts on the various design programs. I started out using Fireworks for designing and just can't get my head around Adobe Photoshop. However, it seems like every designer in the world is using Photoshop. Uh, yes, uh, Photoshop is definitely the most popular uh, design application, uh, but uh, there's nothing wrong with Fireworks. I know there's a, a bunch of hardcore Fireworks users that uh, that swear by it and uh, and don't want to go anywhere near Photoshop. So, I'd, unless unless you need to learn Photoshop for a specific job, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of job app, um, you know, the applications they have for jobs, um, they list out uh, specific. Uh, software that you might need to know like Photoshop, Illustrator and InDesign uh, they're the most popular because it all comes in one bundle from the Adobe Creative Suite uh, well saying that so does Fireworks but uh, uh, but yeah I mean unless you need to learn it for a specific um, job uh, I'd stick with, with Fireworks uh, as a Photoshop user I know there's a bunch of features in Fireworks that are quite handy and there's some great support for building uh, web graphics and it's got some great Features for exporting PNGs at much lower file sizes than Photoshop, but uh, but being a Photoshop user for a number of years, I'd struggle to get the hang of Fireworks. And likewise, like you said, if you're a fi Fireworks user, you're struggling to get the hang of Photoshop. So I'd just stick to what you know and uh, stick to learning Fireworks. So a uh, quick next question. Hi Chris, I was just wondering what software you use to make slash edit your Question Time videos. Uh, iMovie 09 all the way. <laughs> uh, I use my Flip uh, Ultra HD to record it. I'm sat in my loft. Uh, I've got a tripod in front of me, my little uh, MacBook laptop with all the questions on it. Um, and then I import the footage into iMovie um, and that's it. <laughs> Export it and upload it to YouTube. So not too, uh, not too professional in terms of uh, high-end editing equipment but uh, it all seems to do the job. So uh, final question for this week, uh, I've just got out of school, do you have any advice for someone wanting to go out there on their own, how did you get started? Um, well for someone who's just, just out of school I'd probably advise to go uh, into employment first of all, uh, if you can find a, a position at a, a, a small to medium sized design uh, company uh, locally, uh, that's probably the best best way to go and that's, that's the way I did it. Um, I was quite lucky in that I, I landed the first job that I applied for. Uh, straight after uh, graduating from university, but uh, having a having a full time job in the design in industry first uh, will help you learn all the uh, you know all the basics on how, how how clients are dealt with, how projects run from start to finish, how you know like when you're new to it, you don't really understand like how a how a project comes around like from the initial inquiry, how you. Uh, to communicate with the client how you set up the uh, estimates and your proposals and, and lay out all the things that need to be done in the design project, sending over concepts and getting feedback and, and then uh, putting everything live and, and invoicing for the final amount and getting the payments. So they're all things that are quite handy to learn while you've got a safety net of full-time employment rather than going straight into full-time, uh, straight into self-employment as a freelancer and uh, then getting stung by these uh, these common pitfalls. So. It's definitely worth um, you know getting a job first, and you can learn from your other peers, the other designers. Uh, I've all, I've, I've learnt uh, a lot of stuff from from working with other designers as a uh, as an employee and as a as a contractor. Uh, so I've met some really really nice people. Uh, so working for another company is always the way to go first, and then once you've got a bit of knowledge under your belt, then look at going into self employment. And I think I've talked a bit about going into self employment on one of the one of the uh, previous question times, you know, just getting uh, getting a bit of exposure before you go into the self before you take the plunge into self employment, so you're not left without any money. <laughs> so I hope this helps out. So uh, as always, I've picked out a few design links to share with you. Uh, these are ones that I've, I've tweeted before, but uh, I'll just uh, include them in this video in case you missed them. Uh, so first up, we've got uh, a post from Six Revisions titled Eight Things They Don't Tell You About Being a Web Designer." Uh, this looks like a, a great post that's great for uh, anyone who's looking to get into web design and or uh, you know coming out of college or university and it's the things that they don't teach you uh, in during your educational courses <laughs> things like uh, let's see the tools you use don't matter depend on no one for experience create it yourself specialize in something it's okay to say no 
defining project scope at the start is extremely crucial and so on. So uh, a useful one, it goes, it goes hand in hand with that last question really. So next up, uh, another post from Vector Shoots. I think I've, uh, I've shared their links uh, many a time. But this one's titled, Create a Vector Chopper with Illustrator CS5 and Vector Scribe. Uh, I've yet to experiment with uh, Vector Scribe myself, but this tutorial uses some of the uh, uh, features of the Vector Scribe plugin. Uh, it offers dynamic change in shape, fully managed and correct rounding corner radi... radi... <laughs> Uh, da, da, and so on. So uh, basically, you build like a, a chopper motorcycle, which looks pretty cool with lots of uh, bright colours and gradients, and uh, just generally nice uh, vector elements. So check that one out. And finally, we've got uh, another Illustrator tutorial. This time from Creative Nerds. This one's how to create an espresso machine icon in Adobe Illustrator. Obviously, it takes you through the process of making an espresso coffee machine. Um, quite an unusual icon, but uh, it might come in handy one day. And obviously, the, the whole purpose of the tutorial is to get help you get to grips with the commands and shortcuts and, and tools of Illustrator. So, uh, if you're looking to get to uh, get into Adobe Illustrator and vector work, then uh, have a look at that tutorial. <laughs> So that's it for this little episode. Like always, if you want to submit a question, uh, drop it in my Formspring account at formspring.me slash chrispooner. Uh, it takes me a while to actually go through and, and do the text responses, but I usually do it just before recording uh, the new episode. But uh, I do get back to everyone in text format and then pick out a, f a few just to cover in video, video format. So uh, stop over to Formspring if you've got a question. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll catch you all later.